So here we are, July 2022. Happy 4th of July, by the way. And you are wondering whether or not it's a good idea to buy a BMW 335i. <laughs> oh, God. What's going on, guys? Welcome back to the channel. Thank you very much for stopping in. If you're new to the channel, hit the subscribe button right now and hit that little bell notification as well. You don't want to miss out. I do three videos every single week, Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Sundays, and I never miss. And out of the 450 videos already uploaded to the channel, I'm sure you'll find something of interest. In particular, BMW related content. That's why we're here. That's why you're here today. After all, even though I haven't had that car for about a year at this point, many people have asked this question lately. I'm looking at a 335. Do you think it's a good idea? Should I buy a 335i? It has this many miles, blah, blah, blah. For some reason, those videos that I made about my 335i over a year ago have started to really take off. And with that, the questions have started to roll in. So I thought today, perfect timing, nice lazy Sunday. Let's just get right to it. I'll run through some pros and cons, and then I'll give you my ultimate opinion on whether or not you should buy a 335i today in 2022. So we'll jump right into the pros, shall we? First, right off the rip, what a beautiful looking car, in particular the E92, the coupe. The sedans are decent. The convertibles are okay as well. I think as convertible, as far as convertibles go, one of the better looking convertibles out there. I hate soft top cars, it ruins the lines of the body, and they're just disgusting to me. So I really appreciate what BMW did with the 335i, in particular with the, the convertible, decent. I still personally would stay away from them, but that's not what we're talking about today. We're talking about the 335i in general. Of course, we know the N54 and the N55. We're not gonna differentiate between those as either. Again, we're just, sticking with 335i concept. So pros, right off the rip, like I said, what a good looking car. Sleek, timeless, classic body lines. The E92 M3 is probably one of the most beautiful cars ever made in my opinion, and a dream car for sure. Um, but the 335i is, uh, is no exception. A great looking car. It has a nice stance from the factory. They did a good job selecting the wheels for this, this particular platform. But if you upgrade the wheels, throw a spoiler on there, uh, the M-style front bumper, uh, do the little, you know, the black kidney girls, for example. God, it just looks slick with some tints. Oh my gosh, it's hard to beat an E92. I'll tell you that right now. Uh, interior styling, no exception either, especially if you have the, what, the M package or the sport package. I'm not sure what they called it at that time, but... You get the little additional bolstering on the seats. You get the, the leg support there that kind of pushes out. Uh, the leather is so nice. Uh, even in the 2007, just a sleek dash. You know, nice, sleek lines. The gauges are no nonsense. The white numbers with the black background, sort of reminiscent of a, an old fighter plane. That's how I kind of described it before. The paddle shifters, just so good. So good. And you get that little ding the little BMW ding when you stick the key in. <laughs> Hard to beat it. I love it. Uh, we'll talk about the performance aspect of it for a little bit. I think from the factory, decent performing car. Uh, I'm not sure what the ratings were for horsepower, probably around 300 horsepower or something like that. I think when I tested mine, just stock, I uh, did zero to 60 in like six seconds. But I was spinning and had traction control on. And, you know, and just, I tried it both ways. Uh, but no slouch. Um, the transmission, I'm sure people have opinions one way or the other on both sides. Some people will love it, some people will hate it. I didn't have any issues with it. I thought it was decent. I had 130 something thousand miles on the car and it shifted nice and smooth, uh, nice and snappy as well. The paddle shifters are great. I didn't really like the feel of the shift itself, but I love that you could upshift or downshift from both sides, uh, you know, pulling or pushing. I think that's huge. I like that they're the wheel mounted as well, so you can turn a corner and still work the shifters. Uh, so a lot of benefits there, um, performance-wise as well, if you're looking to upgrade or increase horsepower in this car. A lot of people are getting 335Is these days, not for a daily driver, but for the purpose of is a for the purposes of modifying. So I assume that's why you're here. Um, but the N54 was. I want to say it was BMW's first turbocharged en engine for a couple of decades at that point. Correct me if I'm wrong, I'm not a BMW expert, but uh, they over-engineered the N54 in order to handle it. They really didn't want to miss anything. So um, the N54 is known for being capable of holding big horsepower numbers, uh, and that's a huge benefit as well. The twin turbos were snappy. 
uh, and quick throttle response and really got you up and going even in stock form but easy to pull a lot of power out of and that is huge and that's why people love this platform n54 or sorry n55 single turbo uh, still capable of making nice power numbers with limited bolt-ons and a tune and a little bit more reliable than the N54, generally speaking. So we'll talk a little bit more about that in the con section of it, but either way you go, N54, N55, a really capable platform. Speaking of aftermarket and increasing horsepower, aftermarket support is massive for these, these particular cars. Um, lots of stuff available, a lot of different vendors, some really good websites. FCP Euro, for example, has essentially any part you can think of, uh, but they have an amazing... Uh, warranty program as well even spark plugs you use spark plugs send them back and they replace them it's you won't find anything like it so uh, aftermarket support is amazing it's a little bit difficult these days to find some of these parts just because of supply chain issues but epa regulations and things of that nature as well uh, they're really sort of cracking down on modifying vehicles which is a shame and it makes it a little more difficult to find things but there's a ton of these cars out there and a lot of people have already started modifying them so if you can't find parts new, chances are you'll be able to find them used somewhere. So just keep that in mind. Man, that straight six has a unique exhaust note as well. What a good sounding car. You can make them sound like trash, of course, but a decent exhaust system, get that thing flowing and it will scream and sound fantastic. Of course, burbles, people love their damn burble tunes. I'll say another positive too, is that there's a lot of these cars out there. Like I mentioned in terms of aftermarket support, there's a lot of them out there, so if you're searching, you're going to find a ton of them. A lot of sedans, some coupes, mostly automatics, uh, but you can find some manuals out there if you uh, look hard enough and you're willing to fork over the dough. Um, so that's a benefit. It's not like a, a Corvette or something where you, you search a particular generation of Corvette and you find like you know 20 of them in a 200 mile radius. Uh, the 335i, there's there's a ton of them out there, so that's a that's a positive. But let's move into some of the negatives now before this video gets too long. <laughs> a negative, it's an N54. Okay, that's a joke, but it's not a joke. Um, if you buy one, I always tell people right off the bat, you're probably going to have to have about two thousand or twenty five hundred dollars set aside just to get it where it should be before you start modifying it or if you just plan on driving this thing as a daily driver, it's gonna cost you some money right up, right up front. Uh, unless you got some really solid service records and the car has really been taken care of. It's just kind of the nature of it now. You know, thinking of it being 2007 was the first one out here. It's 15 years old now at this point. Most of them have in excess of 100,000 miles. So, uh, you know, they're worn out. Turbos are worn out, gaskets are worn out. Uh, other engine components are worn out. All the little plastic hoses and, um, you know, uh, vacuum lines and everything in there, they're getting crusty and corroded and, and hard and they're breaking. And there's just, there's, there's so much potential for problems. Uh, it's not even funny. So that's $2,000 if you can do the work yourself. Consider about $4,000 or $4,500 if you're having someone else do it for you. Like I said, the N55 is a little bit more reliable, generally speaking, but the price points are a little bit higher for those as well. Um, the N54 was just, you can make so much power with it in such a, an amazing platform. The problem is that it, they're so damn finicky. Um, you could have one bad fuel injector and you're constantly chasing misfires and you replace spark plugs because you think that's the problem. Um, and it, it isn't the problem, but then you got to replace spark plugs again because you had a bad fuel injector. So it fouled out a couple of your spark plugs and those are no good. So you're switching them all out and you think, well, oh, maybe it's the coil packs and you replace all the coil packs. The issue still remains because it's that damn fuel injector. Nobody wants to spend $1,500 to replace fuel injectors. So they do all the cheap stuff first, but guess what? You chased the misfire by replacing all the coil packs, but you still got the problem because it's an injector, so you actually have another bad set of spark plugs, so you gotta toss them out, and you're just spending money, wasting time. Um, just, if you got a misfire, it's probably your damn fuel injectors. If you don't have index 12, and you don't have, or you don't have index ones, anything in between there is garbage. Uh, the ones now, the index ones, although they were really stout and solid, now they have 135,000 miles on them, 
So you're probably gonna have to replace them as well. And that is just, a, it's a price tag a lot of people don't wanna fork over. They were $1,200 for a set of six of them when I had mine uh, a year and a half ago. Now they're like 1500 bucks. One thing that started to scare me a little bit when I got mine running so reliably is that everyone seemed to be spinning bearings. It's just natural. You start to modify these things, you know, make a little bit of additional power and you push it harder. They got some mileage on them now and they just spin a bearing and it's unfortunate. Now we're rebuilding engines or replacing engines. So it just, uh, aside from chasing misfires, seems like if you get one, every gasket is bad. Oil pan gasket, valve cover gaskets, the oil filter housing gasket leaking behind it. That's a little hard to see. Uh, got high, high pressure fuel pumps are going out. Uh, the fuel pressure regulator housing in the back, under the back seat is plastic. Those tend to crack and fill your cabin with a gasoline smell or even leak outside the car. <coughs> oh, what a, what a great platform. But what a nightmare platform. I thought I was done with the cons list, but here's another one. Um, they're getting high mileage. The price point got to a certain point where a lot of young folks were picking them up. And no offense to young people, I was young at one point as well, believe it or not, and like to beat on cars. So the chances that you find a good deal on one, you might. You might find a good deal, but like I said, the chances are it's probably been beat on. Because the first thing that they would like to do is throw a bunch of parts at it do a little MHD tune from their phone, and then race everybody from stoplight to stoplight. It's just sort of how younger guys are, right? Younger guys and gals. So really got to do your due diligence. Really got to take a look, a hard look at these things to see what kind of condition they're in. And even then it's hard to tell. Um, I loved my car. And with that being said, I did a quick search just in my area, Greenville, South Carolina, to see kind of what the market was doing. And even when I bought my car two, two years ago, or what was it? It might have been two years ago now at this point. Damn. Um, the prices were already starting to go up. I paid $7,000, 135,000 miles or something like that. Really clean, decent car. Uh, sold it for $7,700 about a year later, and I thought I was doing well. And now that same car I could probably sell for 10 grand just based on what I'm, based on what I'm seeing out there. Uh, but the price is now, every car is going crazy through the roof, but 335Is specifically, they're really ramping up and it's unbelievable. Like I said, I did a quick search of the Greenville, South Carolina area. They range from six or $7,000 up to 25,000 plus. Uh, the $6,000 one that I found is a ugly color sedan. Um, just kind of, questionable shape, uh, broken wheel. Uh, you just, you'd be getting yourself into a big, big headache if you bought a car like that. Uh, on the other hand, I found one for $16,000. Beautiful, black, looks really sharp, looks really clean, decent, you know, decently well taken care of, but then you read the description, rebuilt title. Yes, it has rebuilt turbos, which is a good thing and would cost you a pretty penny if you were to buy a car and both those turbos blew it at, you know, shortly after. Um, so you're paying for that a little bit as well, but still rebuilt title in excess of a hundred thousand miles. They want 16 grand. Then there's another one for 25,000 really well taken care of car, but what is it like nine or 10 years old now at this point? It's just, that's absurd. It's absurd to me. So would I purchase a 335i today? If you were buying one to drive as your daily driver, no, absolutely not. Absolutely not. Would not do it. Uh, yes, I know it's a BMW. Uh, your driving experience is going to be fantastic when it drives or when it runs properly. I would say unless you are really confident in your ability to sniff out issues uh, or you do a really good job and you take a fine tooth comb to it before purchasing or get a really good inspection done on it, it's going to end up being inevitably a bigger headache than it's worth. That's just my opinion, my experience. If you can do a little wrenching yourself and you're not, you don't have a problem, you know, taking a weekend to fix this or fix that or chase some problems, then it might be the car for you. I, you know, I wish that I would have held on to mine. And the only reason I say that is because it wouldn't be my daily driver. I got a good deal on it compared to what the prices are now. I had it running perfectly and reliably, and it would have sat in the garage the most, for the most part. And for that reason, I, I wish I would have had it still. Uh, if you're looking to modify these cars, 
just really take into consideration what you're spending on it, what you're going to have to put into it to make sure the services are all taken care of. There's just a lot of things you got to take care of. <laughs> Wheel bearings, brakes, oh my gosh, it adds up. Uh, but if you are just interested in getting an N54, you're going to put a bunch of parts into it. You're going to make a ton of power. And if it blows up, it blows up, then fine, go for it. But look for a good deal. It's just going to be really hard to find one. That's all I got to say. That's my opinion. I hope this video was helpful if you happen to be searching for a 335i for yourself. I do miss mine. I do miss mine. Uh, but let me know down in the comments below if you think a 335i, either M54 or N55, is worth the purchase today in 2022. I'd like to know what your thoughts are on the topic, but you just got mine. So thank you guys very much for watching. I appreciate the continued support. Don't forget, hit the subscribe button. Lots more stuff coming for the channel. We're broadening horizons this year, so I hope you follow along. Thank you again for watching this video. We'll see you in the next one.